everyone, my name is Nagura and today I'm going to go over three Mythic Plus Moonkin builds with a new patch. I'm going to explain what each build is good for and I'm going to explain how to play all of the builds. Because a lot of people are confused right now on how to play Moonkin and what talents to choose. So I'm just going to go over it a little bit and hope that helps. All right, I'll show you the build here. I will also link the builds in the description below so you can check them out there. Ignore the class tree. I just, you know, put some random stuff in there. Obviously pick whatever you need. All right, so this is the Star Weaver build without mushrooms. This build is playing no mushrooms. It is playing Power of Goldrin, it's playing Star Weaver, and it's playing one point in Astral Smolder. In case you guys don't know what Smolder does, since it's something that we have never played before in previous patches, it says your critical strikes from Starfire and Wrath cause the target to languish for an additional 20% of your spell damage over 4 seconds. So it basically leaves a dot on the targets, and keep in mind that if your Starfire crits, then all of the targets that you're splashing your Starfire on will also get the Astral Smolder debuff. And Astral Smolder also counts towards Waning Twilight as well, in case you didn't know that. Waning Twilight, of course, gives you 8% damage increase if you have three periodic effects on that target, which means that if you have Sunfire, Moonfire, and Astral Smolder on the target, they will get the Waning Twilight effect. This is why there's one point of Smolder in this one. The upsides of this build, or like the good things about this build, is the fact that you have a lot of priority target damage while also doing a lot of AoE damage. So this would be a good build for bolstering, it would be a good build for single target damage, for boss damage, for tyrannical, or whenever you're doing like smaller pulls. This is a really, really good build for any kind of smaller pulls. If you pull mobs from one to three mobs, especially when there's like one target that has more HP, like a priority target, then this would be a really good build because you are star surging while at the same time also star falling. So you're doing AoE and single target damage at the same time. Uh, you don't have to choose one or the other like you would have to if you play Rattle. So that would be the upside of this build. It's also not running mushrooms, which means that it's going to be a little bit harder for your damage to um, kick off. So that's something you have to keep in mind. If mobs die really quickly, then this build is going to struggle a little bit because uh, you're not getting your damage rolling as quickly. It's still a very good build if the mobs live long enough for everything else to happen. All right, and I'm going to show you a little bit how you play this build. There's nothing too crazy about it other than the fact that, like, on single target, you always use your Weaver procs, right? You use your Star Search, you free Star Search, and you free Star Fall. Uh, the one special thing about this build is if you play Weaver on AoE, you will actually not use your Star Search if that would mean you would basically waste a two-piece stack. So just think about it this way. Um, only use your free star search if you would cast an unbuffed starfire otherwise, all right? So if you have everything rolling already, you know, you have your dots up, you're an eclipse, you have everything going on. If you would be casting an unbuffed starfire, but you have a weaver proc, a star search proc, then you use the star search proc instead. Of course, none of this matters that I just said if there's a priority target in your pool. If there is a priority target in your pool, so let's say there's 10 mobs, but one mob has a lot more HP and it uh, needs to die, then you would still use your star search proc even if there would be a buffed starfire that you could cast. Because that obviously makes sense, right? But if there's 10 mobs and they all have the same or even amounts of HP, then you would just not use your star uh, search proc unless you would be casting an unbuffed starfire otherwise. And by unbuffed, I mean no two-piece stack, no two-piece set stack. Um, and no Umbral Embrace proc. Umbral Embrace, of course, being uh, this tier. All right. If this is too complicated for you and you think, oh my god, there's so many things that I have to worry about, then just use your Star Search proc. It's not going to be the end of the world. It's always going to, even if there's 10 mobs, and of course, casting one Star Search in a single mob is not going to do that much damage, but it's still going to work towards your pull sub proc, so just use it. Like, don't worry about it that much. It's not that big of a deal. But anyway, so what you do uh, with this build is you just obviously apply Sunfire to all of your mobs. Um, and once you've applied Sunfire, technically, if there's like, let's say there's less than uh, seven mobs, then you would also want to apply Star a Stellar Flare first before you do anything else. But then the problem, of course, is the fact that uh, if mobs die really quickly, then you cannot necessarily apply... Um, your stellar flare first. So just keep that in mind. 
But then you just cast a lot of Starfire here whenever you don't have anything else to do. You reapply your uh, Stellar Flare whenever they're about to fall off. And you just do your normal rotation like we always used to do. And that's it. It does do a lot, like this build does do a lot of AoE damage while also keeping up um, a lot of priority target damage. Of course, in this pool here, there's no priority target damage because they're all even uh, HP dummies. But if there was a priority target um, target, then you would be using your star surges on that priority target, right? One thing to keep in mind, which is the same for all other builds that I'm going to show you as well, is the fact that your Starfire does more damage on the targets that you're not directly targeting with your Starfire. Because Starfire, of course, does splash damage. And because we have talents that increase our splash damage, but not our main target damage, that means, technically speaking, if you really want to min-max, if there is one target that has more HP, you wouldn't want to target the high HP target with your Starfire, but you would want to target an off target with your Starfire, because then it splashes onto the main target, which does more damage. But again, that's more of a min maxy thing, and if you don't want to do that, don't worry about it, okay? And that's it. So that's this build. Now, I'm going to talk about another build, which is more of a build that we played before the patch. So with this build, you play Rattle, Rattle the Stars, and you play Mushrooms. So we are dropping Smolder for this one. We're dropping one point of Bell as well, all things. The upsides of this build is that like you get your damage rolling faster um, because you have mushrooms, right? So if you do a really big pool, you can get your mushrooms out as quickly as possible, possibly applying Waning Twilight if you have Moonfired all of the targets as well. And your mushrooms, of course, doing damage too. So you just get your damage out quicker, basically, with this build, which might or might not be something that you want. Uh, additionally, you do play Rattle, which means that it's going to be a little bit more AoE damage on bigger pulls because Starweaver is not that good if you pull like 20 mobs or whatever. A single target is probably going to do a little bit worse because Starweaver is just usually better on most boss fight situations. Other than that, it's not that you do no single target damage, right? So this is still a good single target build and it's also a good AoE build if you like to play with Mushrooms and Rattle. So this is definitely something you can try as well. You can try all of these builds. There's three in total, so it's not that it's like super insane. So go ahead and try, see what you like and see what performs better for you because it always depends on the dungeon that you're playing, on the key level that you're playing and on the other players in your party. So definitely just try, a, like, that's why I'm telling you the like pros and cons of the builds so you can kind of decide on what you need, right? So this build was definitely something that is also really good. It is less priority target damage and a little bit less single target. So keep that in mind. If that would be something that your group needs, or if it's tyrannical, or if it's bolstering, then maybe you would rather play the Weaver build that I showed you earlier. But uh, you can totally do this as well, especially if you need your damage to be rolling faster because you have the mushrooms here. I guess a rule of thumb would be if you ever ask yourself, should I play Rattle or should I play Weaver? What most people do at the moment is if you play Weaver, you don't pick up mushrooms. And if you play a rattle, you pick up mushrooms. That is something that most people do at the moment. Just and the, the simple reason for it is the fact that both mushrooms and weaver require a lot of GCDs to press, right? Because mushrooms, three GCDs, and obviously they're recharging, so you like press them once in a while. And then Star Weaver also requires you to press a lot of globals because you get the Star Weaver procs, right? So having the combination of weaver and shrooms seems to be a little bit overwhelming and you just don't manage to get your globals out. Um, that's why when you play Rattle, you don't have those additional globals from Weaver and that's why Mushroom is fine with this build. So that's like a general idea or rule that you can try. If you want Weaver, maybe don't play with Mushrooms and if you want Rattle the Stars, maybe play with Mushrooms. All right, so now we have Rattle and Mushrooms. Again, uh, as I said, while the mobs are gathering, you apply your Moonfire, you apply your Sunfire once they're all stacked up. And then you would enter Eclipse. Obviously, I'm over having Astral Power. You do not necessarily want to do that. I'm just showing you because this would be how a normal pool starts. Then you enter um, your Eclipse. You apply Mushrooms. Um, one thing you don't want to do with this is you do not want to overlap your Mushrooms. Because Mushrooms applies Waning for you, right? Waning Twilight, if you haven't Stellar Flared yet. So um, do not over overstack your Mushrooms. Mushroom also lasts longer with this patch because um, in the last patch, Circle of Life and Death, 
would reduce the amount of time that uh, mushrooms was up. And now they remove Circle of Life and Death. So our mushrooms last eight seconds, while with Circle of Life and Death, they only lasted like six seconds. So this is something that you um, can play around a lot more now. So you have a like a higher uptime on your waning if you stagger your mushrooms properly. Now, of course, you still do want to apply your Stellar Flare with this build as well on up to like around eight targets. If there's like between one and seven, eight targets, then you still do want to apply your Stellar Flare if the mobs are alive for like another 10 seconds ish, right? So this is something you do always want to do, even if you play mushrooms. Um, but of course, there's other things that are more important. It is more important to keep up your Sunfire and your Moonfire. It is more important to spend your Astral Power, so you're not overcapping. And it's also important to use your Umbro and Brace procs on Starfire and also your two-piece procs if you have a two or three stack, right? So this is something you have to keep in mind. And that's it. That's how you play with the Mushroom build. For all of the builds, you want to usually apply your dots first and then enter Eclipse afterwards. That's something that people maybe do wrong sometimes where they enter Eclipse first and then apply dots after. Usually you want to apply your dots first, then enter Eclipse, then make sure you're not overcapping Astral Power. So spend your Astral Power on Star Surges. And then you, as soon as possible, you press Mushrooms to apply your Waning and to just do damage with your Mushrooms. If things die a little bit quicker, then you can do your damage faster by just, you know, pressing your cooldowns really early instead of having to cast two Rafts to enter your Eclipse. That is usually a bit slower. So if you want to do your damage quicker, you just press your cooldowns earlier and get your damage rolling. All right, so this was the Rattle Mushroom build that you can try. And now I'm going to talk about the last build that, in my opinion, is one of the easiest builds and the least confusing builds. So this is definitely something you should try if you're generally just overwhelmed by Moonkin. Like if you're overwhelmed by Mushrooms and Weaver and Rattle the Stars and all of these things and uh, Stellar Flaring and blah, 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 then in my opinion, this is a good build that you can try. This is generally a really good sustained AoE build. This is the best build on in SimCraft. So this is the build that sims the highest numbers on sustained AoE. So this would also be the best build for Primal Council in the Raid, for example. Now, this build is running Astral Smolder and Umbral Intensity. So really, really buffing your Starfire. This build is focused on Starfire damage. So keep that in mind. It is not playing Goldrin and it's not playing Rattle or Starweaver. So you definitely have a little bit less single target damage with this build. You are playing Warrior of a Loon on this build to increase your Starfire damage. And other than that, um, it's the same as the other things. So you still have Waning and you have Smolder that will apply Waning for you. You still cast Stellar Flare with this build as well, just like with all the other builds. But otherwise, you really focus on casting Smolder and Umbral. There's two important things that change with this build, which might actually make your life a lot easier if you're a Moonkin that is generally a bit overwhelmed. Number one, with this build, um, you actually enter Solar Eclipse on single target and cast Wrath inside Solar Eclipse. So with this build, only with this build, if you're fighting a boss, a single target boss in a dungeon, you're not entering Lunar casting Wrath like we do with the other builds. With this build, you actually enter Solar Eclipse and then cast Wrath in Solar Eclipse. Okay? Just uh, to get that out there. So you don't do any weird shenanigans anymore with Eclipse if you run this. Of course, in AoE, you still want to enter Lunar, obviously, because you want to cast Starfires. Then another thing that you want to keep an eye on with this build is that you do want to crit as much as possible with your Starfire because it will apply Astral Smolder, which then gives you waning. And of course, Smolder also does a lot of damage. So one thing you want to keep in mind is that you do want to try to utilize Balance of All Things as much as possible with your Starfire. Balance of All Things, of course, gives you crit when you enter an Eclipse for a short amount of time. So if you run this build, you do want to make sure that you apply your dots before entering Eclipse. And once you are in the Eclipse, you want to make sure you like channel a Starfire immediately or use a Warrior Balloon Starfire to make sure that the crit you get the crit benefit and get the Smolder proc. For the other builds, maybe it's not as important. Like sometimes you enter Eclipse early without all of the dots up 
and it's like not the end of the world. But for this build, you definitely do want to make, uh, focus on doing that. Now, I also think with this build, you get your damage rolling pretty quickly, even though you do not have mushrooms with this build. Uh, I still think you can get your damage rolling really fast, just because um, your Starfire is your number one damage ability with this build. Starfire is going to do the most damage on any kind of AoE pull, and it happens really fast, right? So as soon as you enter Eclipse, you cast Starfire, and it does a lot of damage. One additional thing I want to say about this build is if you play low keys in general and things just die fast, and by fast I mean faster than like 30 seconds, if all of the mobs die really really quickly because your key that the keys that you're doing are not really high enough, or if it's tyrannical or whatever, then you can play this build with Orbital Strike and it makes things even easier than it is even with Pulsar, because then you don't have to pay attention about your Pulsar stacks. You don't have to pay attention about uh, Rettle, Mushrooms, Weaver, whatever. You just press uh, Orbital Strike, Starfire, right? You apply your dots, press Orbital Strike, and you press Starfire, and you're gonna do a lot of bursts. Now, it's not recommended. Pulsar is still better if mobs live a decent amount of time. It's still just more damage. But you definitely have the option to play Orbital Strike if you want to with this build. I can show you what it looks like with Orbital Strike because I've already showed you the Pulsar thing anyway with the other uh, specs. What I would do on a big pull with these talents is I would apply my dots, obviously, first. And then I would uh, probably enter Eclipse, then cast Orbital Strike, and then just Starfire. And then you literally just sit here and you just like Starfire, 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 Starfire. Like it's a really simple build where your damage just uh, happens pretty fast, right? And you can see that it, uh, that it definitely does a lot of AoE damage. One thing to keep in mind with this build is that your single target damage and your priority target damage is going to be um, a little bit lower. Just because you're miss of course you're missing out on Power of Goldrin, you're missing out on Rettle and Starweaver, which are both um, really good single target talents. And on smaller pools, you're probably also going to do a little bit worse. But yeah, you can see how much damage Starfire does on this one. My Starfall is even better than, or it looks better than what it is, because it's hitting all of these other dummies around me, right? So Starfall um, is actually a bit padded in this details here. Usually Starfire would do even more damage in comparison to Starfall with this build. Um, so yeah, this is kind of how you play all of these three builds. Yeah, again, the downside of this build is that you have a little bit less single target. Another maybe downside of this build is that you are really reliant on being able to cast your Starfires. If you have to move a lot or you're not able to get your Starfires out, then it might not be ideal, but you have Worry of a Loon to kind of counteract movement whenever you do need it. And yeah, I do think this is like one of the simplest builds you can play, especially if you play with Orbital Strike on lower keys. So you should definitely give this a try and see if it works out for you. As I said, I will link all of those builds that I just talked about in the description below, and you can uh, test them out for yourself, see what works for you, uh, see what doesn't work for you, and yeah. Really hope this helped. Uh, I personally really like the rework of the talents because I think it gives you all of these different um, opportunities to kind of min-max or to like cater your talent tree around what you currently need. And I think it's really nice. I hope you like it as well. Of course, we also have Solar Beam now, uh, which is amazing. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments below or come over to my stream at twitch.tv slash Nagura. You can ask in the, the chat there as well if you have any questions. And yeah, have a nice day. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, goodbye.